Okay. Good morning and uh, good night, uh, my friend. Uh, I'm P.Y. Cho. How are you? I saw a lot of very familiar as a friend uh, all of you. Thank you for your coming to join this uh, webinar. Um, in October, uh, we had organized uh, two pre-Congress programs of the Changdeng Forum to warm up the main conference uh, two weeks later. That is the, our uh, yearly topic because the OGS is the main theme this year. These two uh, webinar will focus on uh, dealing with the secondary OGS. Uh, we already had Dr. Watanabe last Sunday and uh, Dr. Choi today. Today's programs uh, will be paneled by experienced OGS surgeon as well, our friend too, in the discussion session. Today, uh, we are so happy to have Dr. B.K. Choi uh, with us. Dr. Choi has come to Chang'an for the fellowship with Professor Lo, and now he is a famous OGS surgeon with an experienced hand for difficult cases in Korea. The topic today uh, he will present is redo oxnardi surgery, underlying cause, strategy, and outcome. By the way, Professor Lowe will lead uh, our six panelists for comment after this presentation. Uh, they are Dr. Yao, Dr. Alan Yen, Dr. Daniel Nornick, Dr. Elva, and Dr. Sarah Yu. Uh, can't wait to listen to this great topic. So let's welcome Dr. Choi. Dr. Choi, please. Yes, Dr. Cho. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got you. Sorry. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am uh, BK Choi from CBK Plastic Surgery Clinic in Seoul, Korea. Uh, firstly, it's my honor to make a presentation at this webinar and I deeply appreciate to the, all the steps of this meeting. Today, I will talk about redo orthognatic surgery. Uh, from now on, I'll call it just redo OGS underlying cause, surgical planning, and outcome assessment. Redo OGS is the repositioning of the entire maxillomandibular complex with new osteotomy and new orthognathic plan and orthodontic correlation. Pur the purpose of Redo OGS is not only functional improvement, but uh, aesthetic improvement as well. We can improve the dental malocclusion or we can correct the problems related with the airway and speech. And we can improve the aesthetic balance. Uh, especially nowadays, the aesthetic problem from OGS is increasing. So that's why I want to talk about this topic today. Firstly, I look into the OGS cases in my clinic. Uh, first one is corrective OGS. Actually, I have no idea what should I call this kind of OGS. I mean the OGS after facial contouring surgery as a second procedure, because the incidence of this corrective OGS is increasing. It occupies the 60% of all my OGS cases. And the primary OGS case is 20% and redo OGS is 20%. I'll talk about corrective OGS briefly. This OGS, corrective OGS is the OGS after facial contouring surgery, such as reduction mandibuloplasty, reduction melaplasty, or genioplasty. It is from surgeon's misdiagnosis or patient's economic status or patient's misunderstanding. I have no idea how it is going in another country, but in Korea, it's a big problem, I think because all, most of the plastic surgeons in Korea are doing facial contouring surgeries, but some of them are doing the surgery without understanding, fully understanding of facial contour or facial profile or occlusion. So many patients who have got a big facial contouring surgery are not satisfied with the result and they are frustrated 
and they finally visit my clinic or any other uh, OGS clinic. They spend too much money and too much time, and they have to get the big surgery again. This is the case of corrective OGS. This patient got a, a reduction mandibuloplasty, reduction malaplasty, and genioplasty, but she cannot satisfy with the result. She complained of the still, she still complained of a long face, a flat face, or wider face. So I found the cause of the chip complaint is facial profile. So I make the facial profile of the patients from concave to convex. I performed the maxillary advancement by two millimeters and posterior infection by five millimeters at PNS. And I did the uh, advancing genioplasty as well. This is before and after. You can find the facial profile from flat or concave to convex. This is before and after. Patients is uh, satisfied with the result. She feels that her face becomes smaller and three-dimensional. Let's get back to read OGS. We feel the read OGS very difficult because of soft tissue scarring, skeletal modification, and major bleeding from scarring and distorted anatomy, especially the nerve position. Nerve position is shifted because of the distorted anatomy. And I always feel difficulty when I fix the bone compartment because of the, because of the bone defect or gaps. So we feel uh, very difficult when we are doing a uh, read OGS. Actually, uh, uh, last week, Dr. Watanabe from Japan made a wonderful and very impressive uh, presentation about how to deal or how to manage the uh, revisional OGS. And she, he explained the surgical planning technique or surgical technique in detail. So uh, I will focus on today, I will focus on the analysis of my cases. I just use the cephalometry and dolphin 3D program when I uh, planning the surgery. I uh, analyzed my cases from 2018 to 2020 for two years uh, performed by myself and my clinic through the retrospective chart review and post-operative outcome was assessed with the questionnaire at least one year after surgery. Age at the redo surgery Redo surgery was 30.91 years and male patient was 25% and female patient was 75%. The time interval between a primary and redo OGS was 2.84 years. Mean operation time was two hour and 47 minutes and there was no permanent motor disorder or sensory disorder and there was no transfusion during the surgery. Primary OGS uh, is following. Two-jaw surgery was 78% and one-jaw surgery was 12% and anterior segmental osteotomy, ASO, was 9.4%. Ship complaint uh, of the redo OGS cases was uh, following. Unfavorable facial profile was 40%. It's uh, uh, aesthetic aspects. Facial asymmetry was 25%, relapse was 15%, and malocclusion or obstructive sleep amnesia was 9.4%, and long face was just one case. And I did the two-jaw surgery with uh, genioplasty for 93%, and I did the uh, two-jaw surgery with ASO, I mean the two-jaw surgery with the Vasmun and core procedure for one case and one just surgery for one case. As for the maxilla procedure of my redo OGS, advancement and posterior impaction was 53% and impaction of maxilla only. I mean the total impaction only or posterior maxilla, posterior impaction only was the 18.8%. And advancement and downgraft Extrusion with Medipol was 3.1% and canting correction was 21.9%.
As for the mandibular procedure, advancement was 43%, setback was 12%, and refixation after reduction of the dislocated TMJ was just one case. The most common cause of redo OGS was unfavorable facial profile. I think it's, some, it's from some uh, anthropometric difference between Asians and Caucasians, especially in the Northeastern Asian countries such as Korea, Japan, or Taiwan, or China. Face is wider from the frontal view with the shorter vertical height. And from the profile view, the profile is flat were concave in some cases. So I tried to improve the entry projection and the three dimensionality for the convex profile. The target uh, purpose of the redo surgery for unfavorable facial profile was to make the facial profile convex. For the convex profile, I advanced the maxilla by two millimeters and I did the posterior impaction of the maxilla in PNS of average 4.5 millimeters to prevent the dental protrusion, protrusion. I checked the difference of uh, SNA, SMB, and AMB angles. I found, S, I found the increase in SNA and AMB angle with significance. This is the case of redo OGS from uh, ASO. Patient got ASO, uh, ASO, but uh, she feels she felt that the nasolabial deepening and long face and aged appearance. So I make the facial profile from concave to convex. I performed the maxillary advancement by two millimeter and posterior impaction by five millimeters at PNS. I also did the setback genioplasty. I will talk about ASO briefly. Uh, I think the conventional ASO, anterior segmental osteotomy, is not suitable for the for some of uh, patients in Northeastern Asia because of anthropometric difference. So I suggested and I published the article a few years ago about rotational anterior segmental osteotomy, RASO. So I do not set back the maxillary anterior segment, but I rotate it so I could uh, prevent the common complication of deepening of na nasolabial fold or aged appearance. This is the case of my read OGS from one jaw surgery. The patient got a one jaw surgery at other dental clinic and she still complained of long face, flat face, or wider face. So I found it's, uh, it's from the concave profile. So I, do the, I did the maxillary advancement by three millimeters and posterior impaction by four millimeters at PNS. And I did a setback genioplasty together. And this is the, another case of my redo OGS after two jaw surgery. This patient got a two jaw surgery, but uh, she still felt that, still feels that the face is long, uh, not uh, short and not three dimensional. She complained of her face, but her face is two dimensional. So I make her profile from flat or concave to convex. I advanced the maxilla by three millimeters and I did posterior impaction by three millimeters at PNS in PNS site. Facial asymmetry is the second most common cause of my redo OGS cases. Facial asymmetry occurred due to the new iatrogenic bony malposition after primary surgery or condyle resorption or dislocation. And we have considered we have to consider not only cephalometry, but a clinical assessment. I mean, the external appearance. We have to inspect the entire face, entire face, not only the soft tissue, but uh, bony defect as well. And we have to compare the dental midline with the facial midline. I found one or two cases among 10 
I found the uh, dental midline discrepancy between the dental midline and facial midline. And at that time, I always follow the facial midline because the uh, because the patients much more care about the external appearance. But we have to explain there would be a discrepancy between dental and facial midline before or after surgery to the patient. And we have to inspect the symmetry between a gonial angle or low mandibular body. And we have to determine the amount of the gingiva on each side. And we have to uh, assess the occlusion, occlusal canting or open bites or TMJ or mandibular deviation. So we have to be careful to assess the facial asymmetry. For the correction of facial asymmetry in my, for my cases, uh, I did the canting correction or dental midline shift or maxillary advancement for the inadequate correction. Uh, it net correction during the primary, uh, primary surgery, there was a uh, seven patients. And as for the temporal mandibular, temporal mandibular joint dislocation, I did refixation after reduction of the dislocated TMJ. This is the case of facial asymmetry. A patient got a two surgery and genioplasty, but the patient still complain of midline uh, deviation, uh, the mandible deviation and mouth corner canting. So I did the correction of maxillary canting by two millimeters at the right side, and I shipped the mandible to the midline and I fix it again. Relapse is the third most common uh, cause of redoosis. Relapse occur due to the masticatory, masticatory muscle activity, deficient orthodontics, or surgical complication, or inefficient fixation of a bony segment, or the lack of adic surgical movement. Early relapse uh, results from erroneous planning intraoperative error or wound healing problems. And the late relapse result from the continued late pathologic asymmetric bony growth or fail of physiologic adaptation of supporting structures or error, errors in the magnitude or direction of surgical movement. Usually uh, mandibular only procedure is less stable than the biomaxillary procedure in the aspect of relapse. And men is less stable than women because the, the chin and the attached soft tissue grow downward than forward in men, whereas the in women mostly downward but not forward or backward. Of course, in our study, 80% was male patient. I did, I performed the maxillary advancement with the posterior infection in four patients and maxillary posterior infection only in one patient. Of course, I set back the mandible in all patients. This is the case of relapse. Patient got a two surgery, but uh, the patient complained of entry open bite and protrusion of the mandible. So. I uh, performed the posterior infection uh, by two millimeters and I set back the mandible to fit the occlusion. And I did the advancing genioplasty as well. The incidence of snoring or obstructive sleep amnia is increasing nowadays. The obstructive sleep amnia is occur, occur due to the change due to the change in the tongue and hyoid bone position and consequent narrowing of pharyngeal airway space from OGS. Of course, it's from excess maxillary intrusion, setback, or posterior infection, and it's, it is also from excessive mandibular setback. I performed the maxillary advancement and posterior infection in one patient, and I did the two-jaw surgery with Vasman and Cole in one patient. And for one patient, I advanced the maxilla by three millimeter and maxillary downgraft, I mean the extrusion with medipole graft by five millimeters in one patient. Uh, 
Usually I advance the maxilla amendable by uh, 3.67 millimeters. This is the case of my redo OGS for obstructive sleep amnesia. The patient got a two-jaw surgery. I found her medical record and they said they set back the maxilla by three millimeters and they intrude. They intrude the maxilla by five millimeters and she couldn't sleep well. She snores loud and she couldn't sleep uh, comfortable. So she was expelled from his bedroom by her husband. And I did a maxillary advancement by three millimeter and maxillary down graft with Medipol by five millimeters. Usually I fix the Medipol in three pieces on each side and use the wiring to fix the Medipol. So it looks so complicated. And long face occurred due to the under correction of the maxilla during a primary surgery. And they simple, the correction is simple, maxillary total impaction. I did a three, meter, three millimeters uh, total impaction of maxilla, but when we impact the maxilla, we have to be aware of airway compromise. Outcome assessment was uh, done with uh, a questionnaire. And as for the aesthetic appearance, satisfaction rate was uh, 84%, 84%. And as for the functional problem, male occlusion was found in 14 patients, but all of them were treated by a dentist. There is no permanent sensory loss or motor abnormality or mastication problem. In terms of psychosocial aspects, the improvement of the confidence was found in 84%. Satisfaction rate for the unfavorable facial profile was 88.9%, very high. And uh, satisfaction rate for facial asymmetry was 87%. And relapse, 50%. And all the patients uh, suffer from obstructive sleep amnesia was satisfactory satisfied with the result of Redoogies and male occlusion 66% and long face so patient with long face was moderately satisfied. In conclusion, uh, redo OGS come from unsatisfactory aesthetic outcomes as well as functional problems after a primary OGS. And especially nowadays, the redo, the redo OGS uh, for, with the uh, aesthetic problem is increasing. So it is very important to evaluate the chip complaint accurately and make appropriate surgical plans to meet the patient's expectation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Professor. BK Choice, thank you for your sharing. You, uh, I think this one is your very recent paper published already, right? Not published yet. Uh, oh, not published yet. Yeah, but mm -hmm. you organize your own, mm -hmm. all your own patients, right? Okay, good. So I think that after your presentation, the first of all, I would invite it, um, Professor Low uh, to give us some command of uh, all the presentation from Dr. Choi. <coughs> Yes, Professor Lo, please. Uh, hi, BK. Uh, it's so nice to see you again and, and quite enjoy your presentation. Uh, I think I uh, would like to uh, just uh, introduce uh, BK to everybody. Uh, BK, uh, after the, uh, the Chang'en uh, training, and he came back to Seoul, Korea, and and do his uh does his private practice and uh, although private practice uh he mainly focused on bone surgery ogs and bone contouring surgery and uh, he is also academic it's very uh it's very uncommon uh, as a private practitioner and also uh follow follow up patient collect data and publish his data so uh, in this regard, I, I think the BK is uh, is is uh, uh, is doing a, a great job. Uh, BK, from from your uh, uh, 
uh, we do OGS. I think yes. uh, uh, you're talking about the main uh, patient after primary OGS and not mm -hmm. satisfied. Mm -hmm. And you do uh, second OGS. We we call it we do OGS. Uh, yes. I think uh, I, I I can uh, summarize your uh, your your presentation is that if you want to do redo OGS, I think the procedure uh, is better to be two jaw surgery because mm -hmm. if you <clears throat> if you do one jaw, uh, it's very difficult to get a, a good result. Yes. Yeah. Especially patient complain uh, aesthetic uh, issue, then yes. uh, <laughs> simply <laughs> one jaw <clears throat> cannot solve the problem. You have to do two jaw. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and also. If you do two jaw surgery, I think a uh, majority of your case, uh, reduce surgery, you do two jaw. Uh, and also in the design, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, in your presentation, you, at least one case, you said that, uh, the initial, uh, the, the, the facial contour is flat or concave and you wish mm -hmm. to design, uh, at the con convex. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think in the design, it's easy to, to uh to major SNA SMB, I think one important thing is that uh A and B angle uh mm -hmm. has to be you know uh between two to four or even uh larger than two. Okay. Yes. Uh one of your case maybe pre op is one degree and post op you it becomes uh, uh, I think it's four degree. So if you have A and B angle uh four degree. That means that the A point is in front of the B point. So mm -hmm. it's kind of, uh, 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 a, a pitch rotation. Uh, it's a clockwise rotation of the mm -hmm. mandibular complex. Yes. I think this, this concept, uh, is quite important. Uh, if patient, especially, uh, Asian patient. Yes. Complain, right. Still complain prognathism mm -hmm. after the surgery. <coughs> and come mm -hmm. to you and what we can do in the design is to uh is to rotate uh the the maxillary mandibular complex so that we can create increase the a and b angle and make sure that the a point is in front of the b point uh, in relation to the end the end and perpendicular line right i would also like <clears throat> to uh, hear your comment because uh, if patient come to come to us with the mm -hmm. chip complaint is that I don't like the result from the first operation. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, somewhat we have to pay attention to patients' uh, psychiatric problem. Yes. <laughs> uh, to me, I find that several patients have this kind of problem. He's very picky. Okay. He mm -hmm. complains a lot of detail. Sometimes, mm -hmm. if you look at the the face, if the face had really had major problem, that's no problem. You can easily design and correct the problem. But if uh, it's it, it is only a minor problem, then mm -hmm. I don't know how do you uh, differentiate which patient is operable, which patient you should uh, really avoid the operation to avoid the problem, the trouble, okay? I think uh, since you, you have been in private practice for many years, you must have some, some uh, you know, strategy to deal with this issue. What What is your, your experience? Yeah, because uh, the uh, patients who are seeking for revision uh, is very uh, sensitive. Uh, for the surgery and they they maybe all the even the doctors really think about that it should be the last surgery so they should they must be sensitive so they visit again and again and again so i explain my uh, I, I explain the most uh, cause most cause of the problem exact problem to the patient and i calculate and I explain it in detail and I do this sim simulation surgery and I show it to the patients and I I expect I let the patient expect the result and then if the patient agree with my surgery it's okay but if she 
do not, if the patient do not agree with the, my simulation or my calculation and visit again and again and again, I persuade the patient not to uh, get the surgery. And sometimes uh, the, because the age of my patients somewhat higher than other clinic because they search and search and search on the website and they, uh, their age is somewhat higher, but there I always uh, explain in detail. I think the find out, to find out the problem and explain in detail, especially the number millimeter or angle, I think is the important. And if the patient cannot understand it, I don't do the surgery. Okay, so uh, during your pre-surgical consultation, you mm -hmm. have spent a lot of time to yes. observe, observe patient to explain to the patient mm -hmm. and then show your data. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the, the data, the, the simulation is mainly uh, skeletal. How, mm -hmm. how can you explain patient that skeletal procedure is like this? Yes. However, the soft tissue outcome may not be exactly mm -hmm. as the skeletal part. How do you explain yes, this? Right. Mm -hmm. So I, when I explain the simulation or uh, surgical plan in detail, I always lower the patient's expectation. As you said, as you told me just now, I <laughs> talk to the patients that I am a bone surgeon and I cannot imagine the softest change. <laughs> so I always lower the expect expectation of the patients. Yeah. Even, yeah. With the, even with my advice, if the patient wants to get the surgery, yeah, that's okay. But if, she, if the patient is suspicious, suspicious of my comment, I don't do the surgery. Yeah. I, I, I think uh, this is a very important point uh, to lower the patient expectation. Okay. Uh, if since you are senior, you are a famous surgeon, so patient may accept your 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 uh, uh, your, uh, your idea. However, if you are a young surgeon, if you if you lower the patient expectation, patient may go to other surgeon for the surgery, <laughs> <laughs> and this will be a problem. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, uh, okay, uh, up to this point, I think uh, I would suggest Choi to, uh, 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 Dr. Zhou to uh, shift to other panelists to discuss with uh, Dr. Choi. Yes, thank you, Professor Lo. Yes, thank you, Professor Lo. Okay, uh, let's proceed to the next uh, panelist that we invited, uh, Dr. Alan Yan. Yeah, please, Alan. Hi, Dr. Choi. Hi. Uh, nice thank see. you very much for your presentation. It was, I, I enjoyed a great deal. It was, it was clear and, <coughs> uh, uh, and uh, very concise. Um, I am a little bit cu curious about, you know, the technical aspects of the reduced surgery um, because I really don't have much experience about it. Um, mm -hmm. Would you mind sharing with us um, what, like besides like be bleeding from scarring, um, what technical um, challenges you face when, uh, when, when doing a redo orthognathic surgery? And also um, I see from your presentation that uh, when you downgraft the maxilla, you, um, you downgraft it with uh, MedPore. Um, is there any reason why you choose MedPor over um, autologous bone? Actually, I think this um, this question is um, uh, is uh, I think one of the audience uh, had the same question as well. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, for the uh, surgical technique, uh, actually, I prepared uh, my planning technique or surgical technique at this uh, presentation. But last week, Dr. Watanabe uh, made a presentation on the surgical technique and planning technique in detail. So I discard the sl slides. So uh, uh, actually, if I have any chance to uh, make a presentation again, I 
want to share the uh, technique, uh, technique with you. And as for the med medical use, Actually, I have uh, I have many experience of uh, zygomela re reconstruction with uh, autologous bone from the uh, mandible angle or, or carburetor bone, and I found it is the resorption of the autologous bone graft was so common. So, because the in the fear of relapse of the maxillary intrusion, I used the medipar uh, for the prevention of bone resorption from the autologous bone, but uh, I have not so many cases. So I am not sure, but uh, I will try it again and again be because there are uh, many cases. Uh, the, the incidence of obstructive sarcopenia is increasing now. The last two months I have five cases and I did, uh, I did uh, two cases counterclockwise rotation and three cases of maxillary extrusion. So I want to, I will uh, check it after uh, six months or one year. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we are looking forward to the next updating about the uh, map for using. Thank you, Professor Choi, and thank you, Alan. Uh, let's proceed to Dr. Chen Feng Yao. Hello, Dr. Yao. Hello, uh, thank you, Dr. Choi, for your great presentation. And uh, I have one question about, uh, I have two questions. First is about, uh, would you make it more clear about, you, you mentioned that uh, for the airway, for long phase correction, we should, we should take care about the airway. Could you make it more clear? Is there anything that we should pay attention to when we are doing a long phase correction? And the, section, the second question is about your uh, practice, practice mode. I think you mentioned that you have encountered almost 50% of uh, occlusal change or more occlusion after uh, we do operation. Do you routinely cooperate with orthodontists or uh, if yes, uh, would you determine the occlusion or the orthodontics will plan the occlusion for you? Thank you. This is my, and that these two are my questions. Thank you. Yeah, for the LA preservation, when I do the maxilla uh, intrusion, Usually, patients with long face has a flat profile. So uh, when I do the maxillary intrusion, I always advance the maxilla as well to prevent the airway compromise. And if the patient has so already has a, a convex profile, I suggest the patient to to do surgery with Vasman procedure. And I always I have to uh, keep the airway with this with this tech, with this uh, method. And as for the orthodontic treatment, I make a surgical plan myself in detail. So I ask the orthodontist the maxillary advancement two by two millimeter or post infection by uh, three millimeters, and orthodontist just do uh, just fit the occlusion or the post-operative orthodontic treatment. So uh, well, most of the planning uh, I do it myself. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so Professor Choi, you will say you determine a cruise, a crucial plan yourself? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Yao. And uh, we proceed to the next uh, from German, uh, Dr. Daniel Lonick. Please. Uh, hello, BK. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's good to see you like this, at least. And I hope we can uh, enjoy each other's company lively very soon because uh, I miss you all very much. And I'm really honored to have my time at this great panel. And uh, congratulations to your great uh, presentation. I think it's a very important issue to. Um, um, to have because um, once you face a redo OGS, you're, uh, you're actually, um, I always tell my patients that uh, I don't know, even if you do uh, a, good, um, uh, a good 3D imaging, if you do cephalometry, uh, but once you go to the OR, um, everything mostly looks like a war zone and you don't really know 
what your uh, what to expect when you go in. So I think it's a very wise thing to lower the expectation. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, when when we see patients over here, I can agree that mostly, at least in uh, in the in in the German speaking countries, there is a lot of one jaw surgery still. And I think also this is a very um, it's a very uh, high incidence of correction that you have to make once people are not satisfied with the result. Um, how do you um, how do you overcome this uh, this obstacle? Because here mostly patients choose one jaw surgery because they're afraid of two jaw complications and everything. Then they're not happy with the results. They consult you. And they have to take even a bigger step of doing a two jaw surgery, mostly also with with the genioplasty and maybe even uh, with Wasmund and Cole. So I think the the psychological barrier to do the redo orthognatic surgery is is very high, also for the patient. Do you have any uh, specific um, ways of building the trust with you in in the patient that they go the more than extra mile in that? Yeah, because uh, I think there is, uh, I, uh, I, I uh, talk about the anthropometric difference between Asian people and Caucasian people. Actually, I have no experience in doing a one jaw surgery or two jaw surgery in Western countries. But in Asian countries, especially in Northern, uh, Northeastern countries, the facial profile is very uh, flat or concave. So patients cannot, uh, Asian patients cannot satisfy with the result of one jaw surgery because if they get the surgery, uh, one jaw or two jaw is, uh, both of them are very big surgery, but they, their expectation is that they will be uh, very beautiful and their result will be very, they, they, they will have a very short face, small face and three dimensional yeah. face, but from the uh, anthropometric uh, analysis, Asian pe people cannot get a, a wanted their uh, hopeful patient face. They, uh, they, they cannot get the beautiful result. But I think that in Western uh, countries, I think Wanjo is, I think it's enough for your uh, patients, but, uh, but the relapse rate is higher in Wanjo. I, it, talk about it in my presentation from the growing of chin and attach, attached to soft tissue. Yeah, and also you cannot address the facial asymmetry and the canting as well as with two mm -hmm. jaw. And mm -hmm. I, I see most, most patients that come to our office that complain about the result. They complain about scoliosis and also about the facial asymmetry after mm -hmm. that, which cannot be corrected with one jaw surgery in my opinion mm -hmm. and also i think it's very hard to uh to have patients that expect a maximum result with minimum effort which i think is one jaw surgery so i was really curious uh, it's very interesting to see that um you seem to also have these kinds of problems in korea <laughs> yeah uh, is especially for the facial asymmetry, the main cause of facial asymmetry. I always talk to the patients that your main uh, cause, main problem of your facial asymmetry is from maxilla. And maxillary, uh, the difference of maxilla height is the common main cause of your facial asymmetry. And I always talk to the patient that you have to correct the maxilla first, and then we have to uh, correct the mandible for the occlusion. So I always ask the patient to get the two-jaw surgery. I think the two-jaw surgery is essential for a facial asymmetry. Me too. Thank you very much for a great presentation, BK. Take care. My pleasure. Thank you, Daniel. So may I ask in BK, how many percentage for you to do in the two-jaw surgery in fresh case? All cases or uh, do you have any percentage? So, uh, which? So how how many how many percentage for you to do in two jaw surgery in fresh case? Fresh case? How fresh. many cases? About uh, or uh, two cases a week? Oh uh, no no! Uh, I'm asking for all your OGS case. The first patient mm. come to your clinic. You always mm. perform two jaw surgery or one jaw mm. surgery. 
Uh, most of them, uh, I recommend trigger surgery. Okay, thank you. Well, but maybe more than uh, 99%. 99%. 99%. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, our next panel on this is uh, will be uh, commented by Dr. Elva from Philly, Indonesia. Please, Elva, how are you? Thank you, fine. Hello, Dr. Choi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Glad to see you here. It's yes. been a while. I'm really a great, uh, I really like to hear your presentation. It's really great, really great. I admire, I admire you. And I just <laughs> want to ask like in your presentation that you have like uh, redo surgery like once, do you have like multi multiple surgery like uh, like two redo surgery or three times redo surgery? What is the highest redo surgery you have ever done? I mean, I feel <laughs> your patients, you know. I have one case uh, for the already got a three times. And uh, the patient finally uh, come to my office and I did the trigger surgery again. That's the first time. So how do you decide that you want to go with it? How do you decide it? I mean, like, of course, from the initial evaluation, you will do long initial evaluation and they will do the OGS. But like in, uh, there is some specific things that maybe you can tell us why you want to go with these uh, redo OGS because it's, it's been uh, multiple times already. Mm -hmm. But even though the, I actually, uh, if the patient wants, wants the uh, facial appearance, uh, facial, uh, if, if the patient wants to better result, and if I can, if I can find the main cause, main problem of the patient's problem, I perform the surgery. But if there is uh, some problem such as bony defect or some severe comp compromise in bone or soft tissue, I uh, uh, persuade the patients not to get the surgery. But if there is something, if there is no uh, big problem, I and I can, if I can find the uh, main problem and if I can correct it I do the surgery there is a one uh, questions again I saw there's your in your case that you have a condyle resorption mm -hmm. so uh, do you always assess a uh, TMJ uh, in all your patients uh, as you know if like for example if the patient with TMJ problem uh, especially in the female uh, patients and then with class 2 and open bite and sometimes with you know, with OSA, and then you have to counterclockwise your MMC, it will uh, worsen the TMJ problem. Uh, how do you manage this? Actually, one case in my presentation, the patient uh, just a complaint of the facial asymmetry, but I found there is a TMJ dislocation and I uh, push it back to the TMJ uh, in right position. And if there is a TMJ uh, uh, problem, actually I'm not an expert of TMJ disorder. So I always uh, cooperate with the orthodontist who are very good at the TMJ disorder. Okay, thank you, Dr. Choi. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Elva. Thank you, Dr. Choi. And next uh, we invite uh, Dr. Sarayu uh, from Thailand. Hello, Salayu. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello, uh, Dr. Choi. I'm Salayu from Bangkok, Thailand. Nice to uh, see you. Yeah, nice to see you. And your lecture is very informative. It gives me a lot of the new ideas of doing the redo. Yes. Uh, I want to share just like my, my agreement about what you have uh, been talking about. Uh, concave profile in the Asian people because we have a lot of this problem in Bangkok as well because a lot of patients, mm -hmm. they complain about their shin is too protrusive. Even the occlusion is, is already good, but, but they complain that the profile is quite concave and they, they want to fix that. We, we, we face this problem as well. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you that uh, in my practice, I usually do the two jaw surgery. It, it's very, it gives me a freedom to correct the patient's problem better than one jaw surgery. I have to say that after I came back from Taiwan, from Yangang, 
in my in my practice, I only do one jaw surgery in just one case. So in every other case, I prefer two jaw surgery. So so I, I quite uh, agree with your lecture. Actually, I want to ask about uh, because we you said about the pitch rotation because you extrude the maxilla. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, uh, do you have any cut point that how many millimeters to downward the maxilla that you will use the bone graft or the net pore? Or you use the bone graft in every cases? No, if the intrusion is more than five millimeters, I use the bone graft or med pore or graft. So if, if, if you want to extrude the maxilla just two or three millimeters, mm -hmm. use the bone graft? No. Okay. Well, if there is a gap uh, more than five millimeters, I use the bone graft or uh, medical graft. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Salayu. Uh, now we are proceed to uh, Dr. Clement Ling. Hello, Huiger. Hi, thank you. Hi, nice to see you on uh, the web. Nice to see you, sir. And uh, so I have one question for you that uh, in your cases, uh, coming for the airway, uh, <laughs> have you seen uh, what's the reason uh, in the first surgery the doctor did not, uh, did, uh, is, is that the reason that uh, whether the, the doctor did not pay attention to the airway or, or they initially uh, go to the first doctor for airway, but they did not do it well? What's the, uh, what's the reason? You may, you, you, your question is that why they go to the uh, sleep surgeon? They um, no. Because you, you have some cases they, mm -hmm. they came for OSA, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so in the primary surgery, mm -hmm. did the first surgeon pay attention mm -hmm. to the airway? Or mm -hmm. in, initially they, they go for uh, another reason for aesthetic or another reason. And then mm -hmm. after the first surgery, they turn to uh, OSA. What, what, mm -hmm. what's the, what's the uh, flow because of the, uh, the procedure? Yeah, uh, I, I cannot uh, hear uh, your question, but the, the patients uh, originally, uh, they, had, they didn't have any problem of such as sleep amnia or snoring, but yeah. they, when they uh, uh, visit the uh, clinic, for the facial uh, bone surgery. I think they yes. usually, uh, they set back the maxilla or too much or intrude the maxilla too much or set back the mandible too much. They don't care about the airway. Okay. Usually, uh, usually it is from, uh, I, I'm afraid I, I, I say it like this, but usually dentists don't care about the airway or respiration. Yes, yes. So, uh, so, so uh, do you recommend that uh, every, every patient can for aesthetic reasons, they, they have to go through certain process to mm -hmm. evaluate the risk of uh, airway problem? Yeah, I, I actually, I don't recommend to uh, visit to visit or evaluate the airway because if there has uh, any, uh, if there can be an airway problem, I recommend the Vasmun and core procedure together because the airway problem is very serious and I always recommend the Vasmun and core if there is suspicious of airway uh, uh, compromise and I yes. plan. Yes. So, uh, so, so in your daily practice, mm -hmm. uh, when you see patients with a uh, small airway, mm -hmm. would you send them for a sleep study or send them to a pomologist evaluation 
or send them for uh, ENT evaluation. Would you, which one would you do? Or off? Uh, okay. Can uh, you probably you did not hear me, right? Can you hear yeah, me clearly? No. no. no so, sorry, yeah. sorry. So what is what is your uh, protocol for a patient with a small airway? Uh, if there is a, uh, I just ask the patient if if the patient has a snoring or uh, a sleep apnea before the surgery, and if they have a serious uh, sleep amnia or airway compromise, I ask the patients to visit sleep surgeons first. Yes. And I do the surgery then. And if there okay. is a, if there is a low airway uh, narrowing by <laughs> retrognathia, I yes, advance yes. the genio, advancing genioplasty with the genioglossus muscle advancement together, together okay. with to the surgery. Okay. And uh, do you sometimes feel that uh, the aesthetic, aesthetic uh, perspective has some conflict with the uh, airway aspect? Yes, I think so. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you very so, much. So that's, uh, that's, that's gradually we will meet more and more uh, uh, condition that mm -hmm. clinically because some other surgeons, maybe uh, OMS doctors or other plastic surgeon, they are doing more and more aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, in my opinion, sometimes our, our judgment for aesthetics sometimes is uh, guided by uh, other specialty, not completely by medical specialty. Sometimes the media will uh, promote some certain kind of uh, aesthetic uh, point of view. So gradually people like to have a smaller face, smaller face. So, so mm -hmm. sometimes surgeon uh, set back more and more to create a smaller face, but uh, not all of them uh, evaluate the airway before they do the aesthetics. So that's probably we have to uh, remind our surgeons or our, our colleagues to always pay attention to, to airway because the airway perspective has some conflict with the aesthetic mm. con, uh, aspect. Yes. No, I think so too. And uh, to achieve a, a balance, balance is very important. Mm. That's mm -hmm. how, how we can provide a, a better uh, concept to our patients. And thank you, thank you very much. And actually, actually, uh, Dr. Joe, he want me to, uh, to show you some uh, slides that, that, is, uh, that is to promote our, oh, uh, uh, Dr. Che, could, could you uh, end your uh, sharing, end your slide sharing? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Dr. BK, would you like to turn off your sharing your screen, your slides first? Well, uh, I think there is some problem with my computer and... <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So I would just uh, just announce directly to, uh, to everyone that hope to see you in this year's Changdeng yeah. Forum. And... Uh, okay, I think okay, okay. Actually, you can share your screen. No. So you can see these slides. If you uh, are not, if you are not uh, registered, uh, please just yes. scan the mm -hmm. QR code. And you can go on web to trade. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ling. Uh, actually, we have a special- and this year, and this year, yes. Yes, yes, please. Yes, 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 please. Yeah, Dr. Ling, okay. please, yes. Uh, uh, this year, we, we have uh, different uh, aspects of uh, lectures that 
uh, mentioning about the aesthetic and also the airway. And uh, also we have uh, multiple uh, video sessions that mm -hmm. uh, because we don't have live surgery and then we incorporate the videos into uh, individual uh, lectures. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. And welcome to, to join our uh, Changgum Forum this year. All right, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Dr. Zhou? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for all the panelists to have a comment for Professor B.K. Choi. Uh, actually, we have special guests from California, uh, Dr. Sanford Reynolds uh, and uh, Dr. Reynolds. Uh, stay all the night to join our webinar. Actually, now is the very early morning, 6 to, uh, 7 a.m. Uh, he, he mentioned one question for Dr. B.K. He is ask, asking when you impact the posterior maxilla and mm -hmm. that you are increasing the occlusal plane angle. And if the occlusal plane angle become greater than uh, eight to 10 degree, mm -hmm. occlusal force are greatly diminished. So do you have mm -hmm. any patient complained of masticatory insufficiency following redo OGS and the following occlusal plane reorientation? Yes, please. No, I, uh, I'm, uh, I have no case of that uh, problem. Okay, very good. And uh, some of our audience have some questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, uh, you show some photos, the, the bilateral mandible, that is mm -hmm. fixed by the by cortical yeah. growing, and the sum yes. you perform do in the plating fixation. Mm -hmm. So how difficult it is to remove the bicortical screw in many during doing the redo OGS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, I use bicortical screw in more than ninety percent uh, in common uh, cases, and uh, when I do the when I remove the bicortical screw, uh, okay, it is very easy to remove the plate and screw, but it is very difficult to remove the bicortical screw. So I use the burr okay. through the troca and I burr the uh, bone, bone part around the screw and I remove it. Mm -hmm. I uh, especially uh, made uh, some instrument, long burr, burr with long stock. So I use it through the troca. Okay, yes, thank you. And a lot of the audience is are very interested in your uh, maple, so mm -hmm. they are curious how you uh, do the fixation for the maple. Yes, maple. Uh, I usually use a three piece of maple on each side, and I fix it with wiring. Only uh, wiring. Plate. Okay. Mm, only wiring. Okay, and the uh, following these questions, uh, if the maple is used as an interpositional material mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in the cases with the downgraft, uh, mm -hmm. will, would it not result in non-union? Mm -hmm. Non-union, I, I have one case after one year's follow-up and I, I just found that there is a union around the maple and there is no defect or no uh, mobilization of the segment. I think because there is a bone union uh, other than anterior side, like a posterior uh, uh, bone or soft tissue is uh, holding the segment. I think mm -hmm. I, I didn't find any defect or any mobilization of the segment. I could find the stabilize, stabilized segment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And uh, that's one is the, once you're doing the uh, uh, redo OGS, you find mm. the previous the BSSO, the mm. osteotomy line is no good. Would you to design a new one cut for the, the splitting osteotomy for the maniple? Mm -hmm. What is so your I don't, I, don't, uh, I, don't, I don't care the previous osteotomy site. I just uh, do the cut in the middle of the mandible width and I use the uh, manual twist technique. I published my uh, article about the manual twist technique to, uh, to avoid the nerve injury. So I don't care the osteotomy site. 
wherever I cut the, I do the osteotomy, I use the, I don't use the osteotome or hammer. I just use the twisting tech, twist, manual twist technique. I hope you find that, find the, my article in the PubMed. <laughs> yes, soon. Okay, the next question from So. Hello, So. Yeah, can you wave your hand? Yeah, thank you. For the redo all GS, how long do you wait for the redo all GS from the initial surgery? The later, the better. Okay. <laughs> sure, sure. I believe it. Uh, I mm -hmm. believe it. But at, at least I do the redo surgery at least six months after pr primary surgery. But I always ask the patients to get the redo surgery yes. later and later. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Choi. Okay, if no more questions, I would like to turn my uh, moderator to Professor Low to have uh, his final comment to this uh, today's uh, presentation. Thank you, Professor Low. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, tonight, uh, we especially uh, thank uh, Dr. B.K. Choi for his presentation. I know maybe in his uh, uh, practice, it's easy to do a reduced surgery. But I would say reduced surgery is uh, is more difficult than primary OGS. So when we face uh, the situation, uh, we need to be very careful, uh, <clears throat> especially before the surgery, you need to pay attention, discuss with patient very carefully. And then during the operation, uh, carefully dissect the, the scar tissue and find out the, uh, the bone and remove the previous fixation and do the surgery and then uh, do a very good fixation. Uh, so uh, in, in uh, this tonight's presentation, we will learn uh, this uh, redo OGS and uh, plus last week, uh, Dr. Watanabe present his uh, technique of redo uh, OGS. So, in these two times presentation, uh, we all of us learn uh, when we have the case, not happy with the result, uh, we can carefully plan and do the redo. I think uh, some of the technical detail uh, uh, were not covered by the presentation. If you uh, need to ask, you can email Dr. Watanabe, Dr. Choi, and ask his, his, his experience. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Professor Low. And uh, at the last, uh, I would like to invite our mentor, Professor Ray Chen, and he is here. And uh, please uh, have a, we have Professor Ray Chen to give a comment to Dr. BK. Thank you, Professor Chen. Okay, Dr. Chen, you need to demute it, your computer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. And uh, BK, and I enjoy your talk and uh, good to uh, share your experience to all of us. And I'm happy to see a lot of friends, especially uh, Randy uh, Renner from US and all the others from all over the world. I think this uh, platform is good for everybody to share and to learn from each other and to uh, express all our experience. And thank you for all of you that uh, joined this uh, platform. And I especially thank uh, Dr. Zhou to manage this uh, seminar very often. So hope you see you every other week or every week or sometimes in the future. Thank you. Thank you, thank sir. You. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, before I conclude that today's the great presentation, I will invite all of you to show you a beautiful smile, no matter where you are, in the daytime or nighttime, even though I always see uh, our friend Randy oh, in the dark, <laughs> dark <laughs> light. <laughs> yeah, okay, I would like to try to capture for all of you. In the first page, please smile. I will count to three. Okay, one, two, cheese. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, proceed to the next page. Okay. One, two, cheese. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you for all of your participation for the two very um, important uh, seminar before the Chang'an Forum. Uh, actually, two weeks later, we were invited our yearly, annually, the very big meeting, Chang'an Forum 2021. Uh, as the Professor Clement Lin already introduced over you, uh, today our topic is uh, talking about uh, acknowledged surgery as well. So these two seminars are so important, that means because uh, they all the great uh, speaker introduce how they deal with the difficult OGS, even though it's the secondary OGS. Yes, so thank you for your coming and I hope I can see you over you two weeks later in our online meeting as well. Uh, we are looking forward to our next ICC meeting is the three weeks later. The topics is the facial scar revision will be presented by uh, our professor, Professor Ray Ogawa. So see you, have a good day and have a good night. Bye bye. Right. Thank you, Dr. P.K. Choi. Thank, Thank you, you very much.